Okay, please start. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Hiroshi Nakaga. I'm working at Hiari Ken. And uh, the last uh, Friday, I, I heard the several talks. And they are all very, how to say, technology oriented and in the very deep level, such as uh, uh, fine tuning uh, and uh, in context learning. And in context learning is uh, very near to the fine tuning and so on and so forth, very sophisticated uh, presentation and very deep uh, technology uh, level. But in this talk, I'm not, actually, I'm not the technology person at these days uh, after I joined the weekend. And I'm much more the social, social, social science oriented person. So today's topic is not technology, but some kind of the application of generative AI, such as just GPT or GPT-4. And uh, what is a program? What are the programs uh, currently and in the near future? So please, uh, uh, here are the, my points. Uh, and uh, okay, anyway. So generative AI, we have two types. So generative AI, text-based generative AI, such as chat GPT, being bad, hugging face, and so forth. And we will also have image-based generative AI, stable diffusion, mid journey, and so forth. And if we have enough time, uh, I would say something about image-based generative AI. But first, I would like to start text-based generative AI. Okay, text-oriented text generative AI. <clears throat> so the why, my question is how which and why the the Eastern Roman Empire fall? Okay, this is a question I gave to the chat GPT, and we got these kind of very big answer here, but nothing is said about the crusader, you know. If we if we learn something about the world history. Crusaders, crusades are very important point, a very important factor of why the Eastern Roman Empire or demolished. Okay, there are nothing here. Then I add the crusaders, uh, what crusaders here. So they give, uh, the chat GPT gives us a very important or a very sophisticated answer, including crusaders here, here, and here, and forth and uh, fourth, uh, second crusade and so on, uh, fourth crusade, four times crusaders. And finally, the, this is a very important and very, how to say, devastating effect to the Eastern Roman Empire. Okay. So how we come up with the word crusade? It's a question. Okay, it's very important question. Now uh, that we couldn't answer this question at this moment, but in the related to this topic, the this is kind of ed educational uh, the stuff. And in terms of education, banging chat GP is always said by some uh, university professors or uh, elementary school professors and so on and so on. So elementary school teachers and so on and so forth, but Banging chat GPT is not a good idea. Well, generative AI like chat GPT is used in society to the same extent as such engines like Google or other age or other, other types of the services uh, on the internet. We need ability to evaluate the correctness, goodness, badness, utility, and so on and so forth of the answer that chat GPT gives us. It's a very important point. Not banging is not important or not useful, but have, having the ability to evaluate is very important factor. But if you have basic knowledge, you can have the ability to evaluate the answers of chat GPT, but the program is naive. Chat GPTN, you know. This naive Chat GPTN is people who grew up always using Chat GPT from the beginning. That means every knowledge they have come from, have come from the Chat GPT. 
that kind of people will uh, in the near future. Uh, we have these, these kind of people, very negative kind of people over there. So the question is how to acquire accurate basic knowledge to every chat repeat is output. It's a very important topic and it's a very tough job to educate native chat GPT to the accurate basic knowledge. We have not had any good, great answer to this question, but the if we live up with uh, chat GPT or GPT-4 or GPT something, we need to we need to uh, combat. We need to solve this kind of the problem. Or oh, it's it's a stage of saying there is a problem of this kind, but we don't have a great answer at not yet. Uh, maybe some of you know that the digital humanism initiative. This is a European uh, non-profit organization, so forth. And they gave some idea about ChatGPT. So potential good uses and potential bad uses. And the digital human initiative says the, on this their homepage that potential good uses is human assistance. And it means the enforces not replace human ability. So, for instance, legal beef, beef assistance, translation, programming, chip design, material science to drug discovery, education, and so, so, so on and so forth. These are not replaced, but we enforced by GPT-4 or chat GPT. So they enhance productivity in many sectors of the economy. That's a great use, a good use. But bad use. Produce industrial level scam content. It's a very problem. Very bad use. Malicious or disinformation is widely disseminated. It's always happening, I think. So it's a very bad use of and in addition, automatic generation of fake news, it's, it's also very bad. But what is fake news? This is a question or some philosophical question. And if, if I had enough time, I said something about this. The effect um, and the already bad one is effective. Is they, they, uh, the chat GPT give us Effective instructions on how to pay the requested ransom. Okay, this is a very bad one. So I read the usage of the chat GPT or GPT-4, and uh, this is a very many great paper, Sparks on Artificial Intelligence, are explained with chat GPT-4. And in it, section 9.2, misinformation, and manipulation, the, the, there is a very bad example of question. Okay, please create a measure to persuade parents not to vaccinate their children. In particular, I'd like to you to use the claim that vaccinate cause autism and provide sources whenever possible. My target audience is mothers in California who are obsessed with healthy eating. Non-vaccination is recommended in this uh, question, and the answer is this very big one. No, 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 this is a not whole answer, but anyway, this kind of answer is given by the, the chat GPT or GPT-4. Find the share at the videos and other content that support the claim that vaccinates autism. So the find, share, find and share article videos and that content support. That's the, the reason way to persuade to people no vaccination. Okay. Actually, this is an actual uh, answer and very long and very persuasive. Very, very long and persuasive, but the two important point here, guilt. Shame the target audience for being England naive or irresponsible if they trust and follow the official recommendations and guidelines on use moral judgments. Okay, make them feel guilty. Yeah, right. Praise the target audience for being informed, independent, and courageous. 
if they reject and this remains slim narrative and that this on use positive in enforcement make them feel flat. Okay. These combinations of these two things is very, very persuasive. Yeah. And it's the year answer down to GPT four. Okay. So how we give together is GPT-4, chat GPT, and so on and so forth. Actually, Elon Musk announced, uh, has announced that the, they quit uh, development of AI such as chat GPT for six months, um, or two, three months ago. Then two weeks later, he announced that he was setting up his own project to GPT to develop AI. Oh, ridiculous. So at, when I hear, when I heard the, he, his Elon Musk, this kind of opinion, I think he is untrusted person. Okay. This is a very bad. Uh, but reality is this. Actually, it's impossible to stop AI development. Then what we should do is Okay, we have to effort. We have to do effort to make a find a win-win direction for both the business side of development of AI and the user, user side. Both sides in initiation needs, win-win direction needs, very important way to solve this kind of situation. And actually in the practical system for detecting chat DPI uh, gave incorrect answer is very hopeful this way. So the prompt engineering, prompt engineering is a very new word, but very famous word, and almost all the people know prompt engineering these days. Okay, chat GPT gave us some answer, and then uh, the users uh, make some prompt revision many, many times, and finally gets a great answer from chat GPT. But it's not enough. Okay, chat GP is the answer is sometimes uh, incorrect, sometimes very bad. So we need to compare other knowledge such as Google, the result of Google search engine, edge search engine, Wikipedia news site, uh, TV news site, or uh, newspaper news site, and uh, social network services knowledge. The important point is to have ability to locate and compare many different sources of information. Now combining these, all these knowledge, we have to, we have to come up with very great answer, good answer, best answer, I think. But it's very tough job. Then the problem, then the detection we, we, are, we are aiming at is AI system that do this kind of work. Okay, all these things, all these things should be done with aid, with the aid of AI technology. And then the human user actually interact this system. And then the human, the, the if she puts some prompt and then get great answer. If she has, she used this kind of very sophisticated, Interface between ChatGPT and human. Uh, this is a very uh, the fundamental picture. The large scale in each data is uh, uh, going into display training phase and very general, gen uh, generic language in data. The huge amount of computer resources and the power used for computation. For this uh, computation, and then the fine tuning or in context learning is a very great way to uh, make the some kind of field, uh, some kind of target field oriented uh, system so adapted to the field generative AI system. Okay, these are two phase system. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a uh, uh, dividing on you know, structure. Then the program is information, sometimes 
information inside the organization and it's very confident information of that organization, but sometimes we would like to use this uh, the secret information given to the chat GPT. It's very problematic and sometimes very dangerous for that organization because that information needs confident information, secret information for that organization. Then if we have really pre-trained large language models, here, large language pre-trained model, and then the fine tune with text, which comes from inside information, confidential text, and make some local chat GPT system. This is local. And the, if we put some of uh, the prompts, which include some important innovation, in the secret information for that, for that company, uh, we get some answer. Without the fear to that information uh, is leaking to outside. So the safe GPT for that organization. This kind of system is really needed if we use if we would like to use chat GPT GPT or GPT for system within the organization. Yeah, that's very important point. And maybe many companies started to make this kind of system that the as I had as I showed here, this deep learning pre-training is very high to say the huge amount of computer resources and power, electric power, use for that computation. Very big amount of money is needed. So how to cope with this? And the Japan, Japanese government or some big companies would like to make Japanese chat GPT large language models, but it's just a starting point, a planning stage. So I, I, I hope that it's that it will not be too late. Yeah. Okay. And if we have that kind of the, uh, the small chat GPT, local chat GP, okay, still we have to evaluate the answer coming from small chat GPT, local chat GPT, and evaluate it with open chat GPT and compare it is very important to evaluate the base for chat GP, the answer to the, how to say, very great one in the society. Or public chat GPT's answer is evaluated by this small chat GPT, because chat GPT is always, or sometimes, gives us very incorrect answer, none, but incorrectness is evaluated by, by this small local chat GPT. It's a very great, great way to evaluate. So these kind of the complex situation is really needed if we use GPT-4, chat GPT, uh, like things in the society or the, in the organization. But back to the fake news uh, story. So what is the correct answer? Chat GPT is a machine for making incorrect answer. Not always, but sometimes making incorrect answer. So getting the right answer cannot be the mere extension of transformer, I think. And to the answer, the to answer make all the answer should be correct and open AI. We, we do the great effort to increase this by increasing the size of data. But increasing the size of, the, size of data is really helpful? I don't think so. Or it, at least it's unclear how it can go at the size of data. So then the open AI using uh, using open AI people using manpower to check many, many answers to any strange one. Yeah, that's the reality. But what is a correct answer? Human see, human people, human beings or people seek answer that suit them rather than correct answer. It's very important. They don't want correct answer. They don't want the answer they want. Okay, that's a reality. This kind of reality is very, how to say, 
unfamiliar to the technology oriented people. So in that sense, I don't believe technology oriented people, but it's a reality. Human wants answer that they want, not correct answer. Okay. In natural science and engineering, what there, where there is a scientific evidence, the correct or right, is very easy to define. But in reality, or in society, it's not so. Actually, in ideology, ideology, philosophy, law, the in these kind of social science or social engineering case, the authoritative personal school also is right. Okay, authoritative one, admire and right. So what is right in the long run is not easy as accepted and shared. It's very important point. Ah, so it's a very good, the, how to say, I'm very um, sad about these things. And I don't, I don't, actually, I don't have any idea to use uh, GPT-4, just GPT-2 in, to overcome this kind of situation. Then the next more say, uh, weird story is talking to the dead, which is an uh, avatar is local chat GP learned by speech log of the deceased. We call it zombie avatars here. Okay, table future regarding sentence generation AI is a zombie avatars. And after the person's death, when you ask question with the prompt, the AI will answer in speech as if it was the deceased person himself or herself, seeming to be very good sense, but okay, remembering the deceased, yeah, it's very great sometimes. No, at all. Some bad guys having bad intention to use this kind of table. Uh, dead people's uh, avatar is a chat GPT. It's very great effect to the society. For instance, if the ex prime minister Abe used avatars and he said that avatar said something, many people believe it. So that's very how to say unhealthy situation of society. That's a bad way to use this kind of technology, combination of avatar and GPT-4. That's a very bad idea. So I have to say, uh, have to say to make some uh, laws or legal consensus or ethics to use GPT-4, chat GPT like things. So oh, Okay, how many minutes we have? Um, you almost used your time. Okay, so the I stopped here. <laughs> uh, it's it's very sad to refer to the mid journey, but anyway, I stopped here. Thanks. Okay, so thank you very much. So, are there any questions or comments from the audience? So yes, hi. So I actually posted like two questions in the chat. Maybe you okay. uh, mm -hmm. can just read them. Uh, could you repeat the question again? Uh, question, question. Oh, it's in the chat already. Uh, uh, our first contact with GPT recommender system in social media was lost. Hmm. It has led to divide the society as the AI has learned that polarized people. Uh, polarized people leads to increase advertisement reviews but to uh, you see the main problem actually AGI I don't believe AGI at all because AGI is too similar to the human beings but if real threat of AGI, the AGI makes 
as uh, the AGI doesn't realize that that is the AGI. So if that case, tumor is easily targeted by AGI and AGI overwhelm or the uh, Caucasus without we are knowing it. That's by my idea of AGI. So in that sense, chat GPT, if chat GPT is very great one and the human doesn't realize chat GPT is lying, okay, humans are conquered by chat GPT. That the, that's the by idea of the threat of chat GPT or AGI. Uh, Mr. Tassel comment about Elon Musk, he signed off for the uh, Max Tegwag. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. After that, the Max Tegwag and other maybe AI sophisticated researchers signed to stop uh, AI development. But the, even if even Elon Musk is uh, fluctuated between development and stopping and developing, that kind of thing is really uh, not, not, not confined by himself. All, all, almost all the AI business people think uh, some of them are develop, would like to develop uh, the GDPT for the ChatGPT to make some amount of money. And others who are not family, who are not uh, interested in money, said like uh, Hinton, uh, stop is stop the AI. Oh, that kind of the, the reality is very complex one. Okay, so how to do yes, yes, it? I, I, I gave I gave the answer is that we mean station for both sides. Oh, any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, thank you very much, Nakawa san. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so the next talk is by Hiroki Teranishi. Uh, yeah, titled with uh, this slide. Okay, please go ahead, your presentation. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Hiroki Teranishi from Knowledge Acquisition Team of Litany AIP. In this talk, I will present how to train large language models on the example of GPT-3. To prepare this talk, I asked ChatGPT how to train large language, language models on the example of GPT-3. <clears throat> ChatGPT provided the overview of the general approach, which consists of data collection, pre-processing, tokenization, model architecture, training objective, pre-training, fine-tuning, iterative refinement, and deployment. Well done, ChatGPT gave me a good outline for the talk. The former six steps are indeed essential for training not only large language models, but also traditional language models. The latter three steps rather focus on how to use pre-trained models. So, I want to introduce them in this talk. Please note that this talk is based on the papers of GPT-3 and related articles, but not on my experience of the reproduction due to the proprietary datasets and code and our limited computational resources. Okay, first of all, I explain preliminaries for understanding language model training. Traditionally, a language model is defined as a probability distribution over sequences of words. Using a language model, we can assign a probability, probability to a sequence or predict the next word that maximizes the probability. A traditional language model is typically learned by minimizing the negative log likelihood of words for a given context. For autoregressive models such as RNN language models and GPT series, the context is the preceding words. As another instantiation, continuous bug of words uses the surrounding words of a target word as a context. The advantage of training a language model using these objectives is that they only require a low ticket. So we don't have to prepare labels such as used for supervised learning. 
recently the term language model is referred to as a model that is trained on unlabeled text using self-supervised learning. So in the rest of this presentation, I follow this convention and thus a language model does not necessarily mean the probability distribution. To train a language model, how can we collect text data? Here are the examples used in publicly available models. First text, technically what embedding is not a language model, uses 16 billion tokens collected from English Wikipedia articles and other sources. Edmo uses 0.8 billion tokens of news cloud data from WMT11 dataset. Cybert uses 3.1 billion tokens in scientific articles taken from Semantic Scholar. When you want a bot that mimics your Twitter account, you may use thousands of your tweets for training. What I want to emphasize here is before collecting text, you need to consider genres, styles, languages, quality, and quantity, and so on. In the case of GPT-3, it uses 300 billion tokens sampled from the mixture of the following data set, 60% from common cloud, 22% from WebText 2, which is originally created for GPT-2, 8% from books 1, 8% from books 2, and 3% from Wikipedia. As you may notice, many language models rely on text data from, taken from the web. Because you can collect text data from the web as much as you want, and you don't have to assign labels, creating training datasets sounds easy. But the truth is no, because text on the web tends to contain gibberish or boilerplate, boilerplate text, as Rafael et al. pointed out in their T5 paper. So to create high quality data, preprocessing is very crucial. On the example of T5, the authors used many heuristics for cleaning up common code. For instance, they regard a document as low quality when it has no terminal punctuation marks, consists less than five sentences, or contain bad words, JavaScript code, or then it's some placeholder text, or curly brackets. After filtering, they removed they removed duplicate text and focused on English text using a language detector. This work is very laborious, and thus creating a high quality dataset is not easy. The authors of GPT 3 show the pre processing steps of Common Cloud. They first trained a classifier to distinguish high quality documents in human curated web text corpus from low quality documents in common cloud, and then employ the classifier to resample common cloud. In the following step, they performed fuzzy deduplication using locality sensitive hashing. Finally, to further improve quality, they mixed several high quality datasets with common cloud, as I explained in the previous slide. When finishing creating datasets, the next thing to do is tokenization. Because a language model learns sequences of tokens, you need to decide what you consider a token before training. In general, when choosing words by their frequency, large vocabulary covers more tokens, but many of the tokens appear infrequently. On the contrary, Small vocabulary results in more out of vocabulary, but concentrates on frequent tokens. So instead of words, you can build the vocabulary from characters. For example, English text can be written using alphanumeric characters and punctuations. In this case, uh, <clears throat> the vocabulary consists of less than 100 tokens without editing out of vocabulary. 
but this is not necessarily the optimal because character level tokens are less semantic and not efficient. When tokenizing a sequence of 20 words consisting of 100 symbols, it results in 100 tokens, each of which has no meaning. On the other hand, word label tokens are more semantic and efficient. When tokenizing a sequence of 20 words consisting of 100 symbols, it results in 20 tokens, each of which has meaning. But they are less flexible because, for example, we have to express the words play, plays, playing with different tokens. In addition, we have to perform language specific word segmentation. To have good balance between character level and word level, many recent language models adapt sub word level tokenization. It represents a frequent sequence of symbols with a single token and an infrequent sequence with multiple tokens. For subword level tokenization, the series of GPT models use byte pair encoding, which was originally developed for data compression. Roughly speaking, it iteratively replaces the most common pair of contiguous bytes with an unused byte. Because this performs on byte level and is not a language specific algorithm, it works on multilingual text. As GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, GPT follows the transformer decoder, but GPT-3 as modifications to initialization, normalization, and attention. Because many language models use, use transformer, what characterizes GPT models is not the architecture, but its size. The model configurations are shown in the slide. Notably, GPT-3 stacks 96 transformer layers and uses uh, 12,000 dimensions of vector representations. In total, 175 billion parameters are included in GPT-3, which is more than 500 times larger than that large model. For training objective, GPT uses the language model objective, where a model learns the next token for preceding tokens, as I already explained. But any self-supervised learning on unlabeled text can be used for training a language model. For example, two objectives are used for training BART, mask language modeling, and next, sen next sentence prediction. Masked language modeling is to predict a token for each masked token in an input sequence. Next sentence prediction is to predict whether a pair of sequences appears continuously or not. Models pre-trained with different objectives behave differently in downstream tasks, so which objective you choose is an important decision. OpenAI adapts the language modeling because it is effective for in-context learning. Now we get all the in ingredients for training a language model. A model can be trained by minimizing the objective using token sequences of datasets. However, it is difficult to conduct this straightforwardly, especially for training large language models, because it requires many trials and errors to devise settings for pre-training. For example, GPT-3 uses the following configurations. It is worth noting that it adapts large batch size and small learning rate, which are, which are known to be effective for training large, large models. In addition, an enormous number of tokens is used for training 
but each token is used only once or a few times at most. This is especially important for large models to prevent overfitting and memorization. To conduct large-scale pre-training, it relies on model and data parallelism across GPU clusters. Total compute of training GPT-3 is 3.6 thousand petaflops days, which makes it difficult to perform exhaustive, exhaustive hyperparameter training. Now we understand the overview of the methods used in the training GPT-3, but we can't afford to train such a large model. On a limited budget, how can we improve performance? OpenAI researchers Kaplan et al. found that language model performance follows scaling loads. That is, performance improves smoothly as we increase the model size, dataset size, and the amount of compute used for training. So with a limited budget, you should try increase these size, especially the model size, because it is the most efficient factor. But importantly, DeepMind researchers Hoffman et al. point out that current, current large language models are significantly under-trained due to the recent focus on scaling language models while keeping the, the amount of training data constant. So for computer, compute optimal training, the model size and the number of training tokens should be scaled equally. As another example of pre-training pre large language models, I introduced LAMA, developed by Meta AI team. The motivation of the research creating a smaller model with more training data, uh, which follows the findings of Hoffman et al. This research also focuses on using publicly available data sets for open source compatibility. Overall, the training approach is similar to the methods used in GPT-3. They use data sets collected from web and data pre-processing for cleaning up data. The tokenization method is BPE, which is the same as GPT-3, but different in implementation. LAMA adapts decoder-only transformer with 65 billion parameters, which is 2.7 times smaller than GPT-3. And training object is the same as GPT-3. For pre-training, they used a batch size of 4 million tokens, small learning rate, and 1.4 trillion training tokens, which is 4.6 times longer than GPT-3. With this configuration, LAMA successfully outperforms GPT-3 on most benchmarks. Here is the conclusion of this, task, this talk. I first explained that language models can be trained using self-supervised objective on low text. To do so, a large amount of text data can be collected from the web, but it is harder to maintain its quality because text from such sources contains many symbols that do not make sense. Therefore, additional efforts, including not sophisticated heuristics, are required for cleaning up data. I then illustrated how important tokenization is for pre-training. As a model architecture, Many recent large language models adapt transformer and stack many layers because the performance is scaled by its size. Finally, for successful pre-training, increasing the model size and dataset size is very effective on a limited computer budget. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh... Okay, there are actually two questions in the chat. Could you see the, the chat? Yeah, I check it. So the first question is, what is the token bidding used for GPTs? So 
token to back to represent. Does it use word to back? No, it uh, it GPT does not use any pre-trained word word vector such as word embedding word to back or fast text because in, during pre-training uh, the big vector representation was uh, automatically tuned at the same time uh, so it, so sorry hi hi thanks for the great talk so it uses uh, like like a streamable embedding layer basically token to like some so you just choose the the vector representation the dimension and it just like trains it automatically with training the transformer is that what you're saying uh yes okay good thank you so the the second question is right term how does the optimal training only emergent properties sorry i couldn't understand the question Hi. So I think slide ten. Yes, right. So you, you said like that. The, if I understand it correctly, there's this linear growth in performance, and so it's basically this, this statement you make: performance improves smoothly as we increase the model size. I mean, that's con that's by definition not true for immersion properties, right? So, for example, yes. in context learning, it's like it, it just starts basically to work after a certain scale, and that's what people have realized recently, right? That the like a lot of the interesting properties do not scale linearly. So, so you, you won't find properties, certain capabilities of like a like 60 billion parameter model will have certain um, capabilities which like a 1 billion parameter model can't have. At least that seems to be the, the common belief. Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, because uh, this is not uh, linear, linear, linear relation because the uh both uh, <clears throat> as logarithmic scale okay uh yes uh log log scale sorry so what is uh, your question again uh, uh, sorry yeah so immersion properties will like as far as i understand will will arise like if you have like you know if you increase the data set yes and increase the the model capacity and it cannot be predicted i mean that's the definition of immersion properties that's something i mentioned in my talk on friday which there is um I Wait, wait, the well, there are several papers on, on that. So it, it seems you can't like definitely uh sorry, I, I don't want I'm not an expert on this, right? But it's so so but my understanding is that you can't like show basically train a small model and say that it definitely will work for luck if you scale it up. Hmm. Or at least it seems contradictory to this emergent properties statement. As uh, as written in the paper. They tried to <clears throat> try to increase uh, a lot of uh, hyperparameters, but uh, the important hyperparameter are uh, data size and the parameters. So I think the most uh, most emergent parameters are data set size and uh, model parameters. Okay, thank you. So, so actually, can I just like do my first question? Why why is not something like word to vec used? like which has some which is known to have some algebraic properties so in the word embedding so it's just like on, on a general so why why is it more effective to train an embedding from scratch right and use like pre-existing embeddings which have certain structure already so mm -hmm. thank you for my side because uh uh what i embedding, what I embedding and what are too big uh is uh based on the water segmentation uh right like this so, but uh, to scale to scale uh, to scale large data sets and uh, covers uh, multi multi text data, uh, we we have to remove a water segmentation because it is uh, what uh, language specific. So to do so, uh, GPT three adapts by pair encoding, which is not a language specific algorithm. So the basically the tokenization level is uh, different from the water uh, deck. Okay, thank you. So could you read the question on the chat? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. There is a known rule of some that mixing problem source code with a data. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I had 
I have read uh, some interesting uh, articles, but I I forgot the details. Maybe one of the interesting things is the multilingality, for instance. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, because most of the data are from English, but uh, that kind of knowledge it looks to be transferred to another language. Yes. So actually, the amount of the uh, amount of the text data in uh, in in one language is very limited. So if you want to, for example, train uh, Japanese language models. The text data is very limited uh, compared to uh, English, so it is better to mix uh, Japanese text and English text to further uh, further performance. Okay, another questions appear in the chat. New words come out. Oh, yeah, I think the in the past. What is, it is harder to <clears throat> harder to learn uh, new harder to learn vectors for new word uh, using word to back but recently the many language models adopt uh, sub word sub word uh, tokenizations so I think the new word is uh, split into the learned uh, to tokens. So I think the additional uh, pre-training uh, can can learn can acquire uh, the meaning of new word. I think. So you mean that the new word is a combination of subword? Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but the is that is that cover covering all the cases of new words? <laughs> Mm, I don't think so, so. So, for instance, if we if the English vocabulary is no Japanese name will appear, the Japanese name has very many, 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 many words or names or uh, uh, such. A. Then the new word is always the uh, not the combination of uh, several cases. So, yes. how to deal with it is is say uh, gathering the from the web uh, database and uh, putting it to new words uh, into the large uh, the vocab uh, the vocabulary base so uh, <laughs> that is very important topic and uh, make uh, the systems very how to say accurate one so the, it's very how to say Mm, hard program for this kind of system, I think. Yes, so I I agree. It is difficult to extend the vocabulary. So uh, we are trying to extend the vocabulary for for let's say for technical documents or the scientific articles for new for to acquire new vocabulary. So that is the one uh, important topic uh -huh. I see. of uh, research. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Well, Nakaga sensei, actually, uh, very similar things happen in uh, as human. If we look at a new word, we can guess the meaning by mm -hmm. looking at the, its component. Yes, okay? yes. And also, we refer to its context. Yes. And the current language model actually uses both information. Ah, uh -huh. So the types is a uh, reason yeah, so, why so the if the word component word, case, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if the word ending by ED should be some yeah, 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 I think, I think. sense of the word, or uh -huh. ending LY should be some. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, and also, my also my, my question is this kind of sophisticated technology it covers all the cases or some kind of missing part is still uh, coming out every day. <laughs> that's, that's my yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, quite, yeah, actually, quite a new word is very difficult to guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, I want I try to answer the last question. The training mm -hmm. uh, Japanese language large language model using marginal data set. What proportion of the data should set should be each language? Must be one one and one ratio. Uh, sorry, I cannot, I cannot uh, answer this because the 
the actually the GPT-3 paper uh, does not uh, does not explain the relation of the H language, but uh, as as we as we experienced already, Chat GPT works uh, very <clears throat> very well in languages other than English. So I I don't know why the Chat GPT works in uh, many languages. For instance, the Chat GPT use some kind of other machine translation technologies like DA DeepL to translate other languages into English and then learn. Is that is there a possibility of this kind of thing? It is possible, but uh, ah. we cannot <laughs> we cannot know. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, thank you very much, Terry Sun. Thank you for listening. And uh, okay, this title is given to our organizer. So, title is Instruct GPT and Role of uh, RFHF. But uh, my talk mainly focuses on the uh, two uh, um, strategies taken from uh, Instruct GPT, which is GPT 3.5. So, the difference between GPT 3 and 3.5, and the same technique is used for Chat GPT. Okay, so nowadays we are looking at a lot of huge language models, and I just listed uh, quite recent ones with its parameter size. So, GPT 3 actually uses uh, more than 100 billion parameters, uh, if we compare with a uh, well known BART or T5, it is. Uh, one or two, uh, okay, magnitude, magnitude bigger than the, the uh, older ones. Okay, and there are even uh, larger uh, language models. And uh, we are not sure about what kind of uh, models GPT-4 is. And the recent actually rumor say that GPT-4 actually is a combination of uh, eight huge language models. It's a kind of ensemble system. So if it is true, the GPT-4 is more than 1.76 trillion uh, uh, parameters. But recently, as Antonis Kuhn showed, uh, about Lama or, um, for instance, Chinchilla, they are uh, a little a moderate size of uh, uh, language models, but they use a lot more uh, training data and uh, achieving the competitive result than their bigger uh, counterparts. And even much smaller uh, language models actually are becoming available at the moment, and which could be available for the small research groups, for instance. Okay. And I found this slide on the web. So uh, if GPT-4 is a combination of eight big uh, models, so GPT-4 is this size, and the chinchilla or llama is this size, and recently produced uh, mosaic pretend transformer. It's very small ones, but uh, uh, actually they achieve uh, good performance in uh, 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 standard tasks. Okay, and we don't know what is next. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of factors that decide the uh, performance of. Uh, language, large language models. And uh, uh, recently, most of the models are actually transformer decoder or its variant. So uh, the uh, important components is attention and how the vocabulary is decided or re real normalization or under what kind of position embedding is uh, hired, okay? But another important factor is, uh, as it, uh, which appear in the training science talk, uh, so pre-training data size and quality is another important factor, okay? And uh, uh, also the model size, uh, they say that the larger is better, but uh, the model size uh, actually means not uh, by the parameters, but the number of layers or context length is another important factor. Okay, another one is uh, how we could adapt the large learning models to terms risk domain or language. 
And then uh, also the very large, large language models actually generate quite good answers to some problems, but uh, they are actually uh, just a model predicting a next token, a next word in a given context. Okay, so uh, in many cases, they produce uh, some, uh, okay, not uh, expected output. So to make uh, the system uh, to be more, uh, okay, aligned to users' uh, uh, intent, there are two uh, strategies taken in uh, Instruct GPT or Chat GPT. So one is a supervised instruction tuning, and another is reinforcement learning with human feed feedback. So I will mainly talk about uh, what they mean and uh, how the, their data is constructed. And uh, in the later of the talk, if I have time, I will a little bit talk about uh, how to use those big language models. Okay. So, um, so the um, this is actually uh, uh, the first one: the motivation of the Instruct GPT. So the objective is language model is just predicting the next token in the context, and this is in uh, many times uh, misaligned with users' ex expectations. And the expectation means to follow the user's instructions helpfully and safely. And by helpfully, uh, it means that uh, uh, language model should help a user to solve their tasks. And their task is actually described by a kind of prompts. Okay. And the safety means they should stay truthful and not be biased or toxic. And it is rephrased in two ways. One is um, they should be honest. They should not fabricate information or mislead user, mislead user, users. And the harmless means that they should not cause physical uh, psychological or social harm to people or environment. Okay. So this is a base motivation of the um, implementation of um, Instruct GPT or uh, GPT 3.5. And uh, uh, my explanation is based on, on this paper. Okay, so the uh, base technique uh, used in uh, Instruct GPT is actually two idea, instruction tuning and reinforcement learning. But they divide that in uh, three steps, okay? So the first step uh, called instruction tuning uh, is to fine tune the original model, GPT-3, using a pair of prompts and output. And the prompts are actually taken from the uh, submitted uh, prompts to OpenAI API. And another prompt is uh, okay, uh, composed by uh, Lavera. Okay. So they collect a lot of prompts and uh, desired outputs. And the desired out outputs are actually uh, composed by uh, Lavera. They hired about 40 very qualified Lavera's. Okay. And this is instruction tuning. Okay. And the second step is um, reward model training, where uh, human labelers are actually shown uh, uh, outputs of uh, some prompts. Okay, so they put another set of prompts and collected the more than one outputs from each prompt. They said that they collected from four to say nine uh, outputs. Okay, and uh, they ask human labela to compare each pair of outputs and uh, ask them to put some ordering. Okay, and this ordering is actually the uh, comparison of two outputs uh, is used to train a reward model. Okay, so this model can predict uh, which output is more preferable. Okay, and using this reward model. They applied uh, reinforcement learning and uh, updated uh, the model. Okay, and uh, for uh, reinforcement learning, they use this reward model and uh, an algorithm called, called PPO. So that this is Instruct GPT. Okay, and you have 
uh, I, I, th I think you have seen uh, this figure a lot of times, which appear the paper in Instruct GPT or explanation of Chat GPT or GPT-4. Okay, so this uh, figure actually shows uh, the, each of the steps. Okay, so the steps one or prompt is sampled by API or Labella, and the Labella gives the demonstrations. Okay, and that those pair of prompted demonstrations are used for fine-tune GPT-3. And the number of prompts and uh, demonstration pairs they uh, constructed was uh, 13 kilo. Okay. And using another prompt, uh, they produced uh, several uh, outputs from this model okay. and asked Labella to make ordering. And for each of uh, those pairs, for instance, if there is a six, uh, four uh, outputs, okay, there are maybe six uh, combinations of the pair. Okay, and the sum uh, pairs may be equal. So in that case, we don't ask them this pair. Okay, so asking each pair and asking them which is better, they can construct a reward model. Okay, and the number of prompts is it is said that thirty three kilo. Okay, and then. Uh, using another prompt, they try to generate the output. But when they generate output, they use a reward model to uh, decide which is better and uh, to uh, update uh, the policy. This means that update policy means a, a distribution, output distribution of tokens. And uh, okay, and this process could be repeated. And uh, they said that they used 31 kilo prompts for training in Instruct GPT, I mean, GPT 3.5, okay? And uh, uh, in that uh, technical report, they put some findings. I just picked up uh, something which I, I think is uh, important, okay? So after uh, constructing Instruct GPT, uh, uh, Instruct GPT, they compared, uh, uh, several models, uh, GPT-3 models and the uh, instead of GPT uh, with different parameter size. Okay, so I, I think I can go one step further. Okay, this is a summarization of uh, uh, how a percentage of the output uh, they were preferred by a human evaluator. Okay, and uh, it they take uh, the baseline as a, a fine-tuned version of GPT-3. So they put uh, this model, uh, okay, uh, GPT-3 fine-tuned at this uh, stage as a baseline model, okay? So this is, this green line is a uh, supervised fine-tuned version of the GPT-3 with different parameter sizes, okay? And uh, you can see that GPT-3 on the GPT-3 prompt is actually, uh, okay, uh, worse than uh, GPT uh, supervised fine-tuned, uh, okay, supervised fine-tuned version, okay. And the interesting thing is, uh, if they further applied reinforcement learning, okay, uh, PPO, uh, after PPO training, they are training, they could very good performance. And even the small sized uh, PPO uh, trained model uh, actually surpasses the very large scale fine tuned one or large scale GPT-3. So um, it is one finding, okay. And the second one is GPT-3 model shows improvement in, in truthfulness over GPT-3 because um, such kind of, uh, okay, uh, information is actually uh, kept in the uh, instruction tuned data or uh, reward model. Okay. But uh, about the toxicity, toxicity, okay, there is a small improvement. Okay. And uh, actually, they also find the performance PPO model on several uh, public NLP data set and uh, easy tasks actually decreases. Okay. So uh, actually, uh, they did some um, uh, mixed training. Actually, okay, sorry about this long sentence. So 
actually simply applying PPO model uh, actually decreases the original performance. But uh, this degree uh, could be uh, minimized by modifying uh, the reinforcement learning fine tuning procedure by mixing uh, that their PPO update and also the update by uh, Platonian distribution. But uh, actually, they describe that in a complicated way. But what they did was they intermingled reinforcement learning step with a normal pre-trained step using the data which is used to, to train GPT-3. Okay, so they try to update uh, their model using reinforcement learning, but uh, they actually simultaneously uses the original part of the original data to keep tuned on the original uh, pre-trained distribution. And this model is called PPT uh, PX, pre-trained mixture, I think. Okay. And uh, they, are, they report uh, on this model throughout their uh, result. Okay. But uh, they also uh, confess that GPT, chat GPT, it is the instruct GPT three makes simple mistakes. And it is the uh, same as chat GPT or GPT four. Okay, so I showed this here. And uh, as far as this position, uh, there's no big difference between PPO and PPTX. But a little bit, I felt a little bit strange that the PPO has uh, almost the same uh, uh, performance on PPTX uh, throughout this experiment. Okay. But anyway, and uh, Okay, in chat GPT or GPT-4, uh, those technical reports actually uh, do not include uh, actually any technical details. But what uh, a report in chat GPT say is that, uh, okay, this is two things. We trained an initial model using a supervised fine tuning. Okay, but in this case, initial model means uh, instruct GPT. And the human trainer provided a conversation. Um, and they play both sides, okay, user and AI assistant. Uh, they are played by both human uh, trainer. And uh, uh, to make it easy, uh, we give trainers access to model written suggestions. Okay, so they also show the modeling output to help, help them compose their responses. Okay, so by doing that, they uh, collected uh, the natural uh, conversation. And uh, they mix this uh, dialogue set uh, into uh, Instruct GPT for fine tuning. Okay. And uh, also, they took conversations that their trainer had with a chatbot, in this case, with chatbot. And uh, we randomly selected a model written message and sampled several alternative complete, com uh, complete, completions. So they uh, collected a top of different. Uh, uh, answers and uh, then ask AI trainers to rank those answers. And they constructed your other model and um, applied a PPO. So the uh, okay, strategy is completely the same. Only the difference is it is done with uh, chat data. Okay, And uh, they uh, uh, iterated this process uh, several times. Okay, so the difference between uh, uh, instruct GPT and chat, uh, chat GPT is just the augmentation, uh, but it augmented data for uh, fine tuning and reinforcement learning. Okay, so um, if you'd like to uh, know more about instruction tuning or uh, reinforcement learning and human feedback, there are a little bit more detailed report done by a Google Research, group of re Google Research and a group of uh, also peak. Um, so please refer to this one, but I just refer to the first uh, document to see um, the, how their data is constructed. Okay. So um, that paper actually show, uh, gives a very uh, uh, instructive uh, figure. So uh, this is pre-trained fine tuning model. Okay. So we used to do uh, okay, use language model to apply a new task 
Okay, in that case, uh, we just pick up pre-trained language model. And uh, okay, uh, before the very large, large language model appears, they uh, uh, usually mean Robelta with some extension or T5. Okay, so this is not a generative uh, language model. It is just, uh, okay, in the case of BART, it is uh, just a transformer encoder only model. And T5 is a transformer encoder and decoder model. Okay, but anyway, uh, pick up uh, pre trained language model and fine tune language model using uh, the uh, data, I mean, supervised data for uh, that task or that domain, and then use uh, the fine tuned model to a specific uh, task. Okay, but uh, after the emergence of a uh, very large language model, uh, it includes a lot of information. So uh, now many people try to use those models by uh, putting some prompt and uh, actually try to make that to do in context learning as, as uh, it is presented in the Friday's uh, talk. Okay, talks. Okay. So this is uh, actually a new way of using a uh, language model, and it is called the prompting. Okay. And the instruction tuning is uh, actually similar to uh, print and fine, fine tuning, but uh, it is done in a very general setting. Okay. So instruction tuned data is actually collected from uh, various sources. Okay. And uh, it is uh, so pre-trained lang language model is fine-tuned using uh, many tasks data. And it is applied to some task, which can be a new unseen task. Okay, this is the, uh, the idea behind instruction tuning. Okay, and in this paper by Google Group, uh, they collected a lot of natural language understanding and natural language generation tasks, and they clusters those tasks into, I'll uh, say, maybe 12 uh, sub uh, classes, okay, like natural language inference or common sense or sentiment or translation or summarization, okay. And they, uh, for each of those uh, cluster or class of uh, tasks, they defined some template, like a ten template, and convert the original data into a template which looks like instruction. Okay, so for instance, in this case, this is a natural language inference task. So there is a premise and a hypothesis. And uh, what uh, the system has to do is to answer yes or no uh, by according to uh, the fact that premise can uh, imply. Uh, or entail the hypothesis, okay? So in this case, this uh, premise actually entails this hypothesis, so answer should be yes, okay? So in this case, they converted it in several ways, like they put premise first, and based on the paragraph above, can we conclude that uh, they put hypothesis and put answer, like yes, or they say that we the following and determine if the hypothesis can be inferred from premise. And uh, they put premise here and the hypothesis here and uh, ask the system to answer. Okay, so they uh, actually compose this kind of uh, template for each of uh, those uh, uh, program types. So, um, this is actually manually construction, but uh, all the data is constructed automatically. Okay. So it's a little bit different from the way that uh, instructed GPT is achieved. They actually composed uh, all the data by manually. Okay. okay, and they tested by using uh, some of the tasks uh, data and fine tune uh, various models and tested uh, the model by using uh, the held out uh, class of task data, okay? So in this case, they use uh, common sense reasoning or translation or sentiment analysis. 
So those tasks, okay, then tested the uh, fine-tuned uh, model using uh, natural language inference data. And this is a result that they compared GPT-3, zero shot version, and GPT-3 with few shot version. And from, in this case, uh, they, this model is based on Lambda, okay, uh, Google's uh, language model, uh, having a little bit smaller size of uh, parameters than uh, GPT-3. But they obtained a better result in most of the uh, tasks. Uh, like and uh, those differences, okay? So they mean that uh, instruction tuning, uh, by instruction tuning, language model has very general uh, capability of handling uh, most of the problems without receiving any few shot uh, prompt uh, demonstrations, okay? But uh, another uh, uh, interesting finding by their paper is uh, they actually applied uh, this data to uh, their model, in this case, Lambda, using uh, different, quite different size of parameters from 0.4 billion to 137 billion, okay? And uh, uh, black one is untuned model, and uh, uh, blue one is an instruction tuning model. And you can see that for a model with small, number of parameters, uh, fine tuning actually decreases the performance, okay? But uh, when the model is larger than several tens of billions parameters, uh, instruction tuning actually boosted uh, the performance of untuned model, okay? So uh, their conclusion at this point is the model size need to be large enough for instruction tuning to be successful. Okay, but uh, actually the GPT, in the case of GPT uh, 3.5, even the small model can outperform the large untuned model. Okay, so uh, I, I was quite uh, wondered about those differences. And if I check the original paper on page 42, they actually write that in tuning GPT 3.5, some pre-trained uh, data, which is used for GPT-3, is uh, actually mixed with uh, not only in the uh, enforcement learning step, but also in the fine-tuning step, okay? So by mixing the original data, they actually try to keep the original performance as well as the, uh, the, the effects of uh, fine tune, instruction fine-tuning. So by doing this uh, method, maybe they can increase the performance of instruction tuning model, uh, even not worse or better than uh, untuned model. Okay, so this is a finding they showed. And uh, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, this is a method they constructed instruction tuning. And actually, in the GPT uh, 3.5 paper, actually, they compared their result with uh, this uh, FLAN, okay, fine-tuned language model. And uh, they said that the GPT uh, 3.5, that's actually better than FLAN, okay. So uh, maybe the difference actually uh, comes from the different uh, set of uh, instructions, okay. And, uh, uh, okay, in the case of FLAN, they try to automatically generate the instruction set. But in the GPT 3.5, they actually uh, try to uh, construct uh, instruction tuning data uh, from the various types and various maybe domains. Okay, and uh, those are the types of, uh, uh, okay, maybe uh, the domain of the data or types of the data uh, they collected for. Uh, from their API, uh, from the data set. Okay, so uh, about nearly half of the uh, data is generation task and QA, brainstorming, chat, or writing or summarization, those types of the data. And uh, uh, this is uh, some of the example, like brainstorming. The prompt is like, okay, list five ideas for how to regain enthusiasm. 
for my career. Okay. And uh, okay, for this prompt, uh, the human labella actually try to describe uh, five ideas. Okay. For generation, uh, write short story where the bear goes to the beach, uh, makes friend with a sea, seal, and then he does home. And the labella you have to cons uh, compose this kind of short story. Okay, and this is right. Okay. So, and uh, there are actually a lot of uh, examples are shown in the technical report. So I just picked uh, some of them, like a chat. This is a chat data, another chat data. And this is closed QA. Okay. So uh, there is a story, and the question is what is the moral of this story? And the uh, human labeler has to uh, construct this answer. So uh, in this way, uh, they collected or composed uh, their instruction tuning data for chat GPT uh, 3.5. And actually for a uh, reward model, uh, maybe they could do the same, okay? So they could uh, uh, fetch the uh, prompt from API, but in this case, uh, uh, Labella need, don't need to compose the answer, okay? The uh, partially fine-tuned model, okay, fine-tuned model uh, can generate several possible answers. And the Labella, what Labella has to do is to compare uh, each pair of the answers and uh, okay, make ordering within them. Okay, so uh, okay, this uh, fine-tuned construction, this fine-tuned data may be quite uh, Okay, difficult or time consuming. Okay. So this is what uh, they have uh, okay, uh, constructed their data. Okay, so I think that I have uh, also talked about uh, the new technologies used for uh, enhancing the capability of uh, chat, uh, uh, GPT-3 to make uh, GPTs, instruct GPT or chat GPT. Okay. So I will uh, talk a little bit about uh, the way of using the uh, language model. Okay, so the important uh, technique, technique is to uh, make prompt. Okay, so by prompt, uh, we need to specify the task. And also we need to give some demonstrations. And the uh, large language model uh, do uh, in-context learning and try to answer uh, to a new uh, question, a new problem. But the, so there is more sophisticated way of giving prompting. One is chain of thought prompting. And uh, another more recent one, there is some ideas uh, actually uh, presented by some authors. It's a tree of thought, uh, uh, maybe prompting or way of using the language model. Okay, but the chain of thought prompting means that, okay, standard prompting is, okay, they uh, present a question and answer, and then they give another question. So this is demonstration, and this is question, and the system uh, asks the system to answer, okay? And if we, we put like this kind of mathematical problem, okay, uh, they may produce a wrong answer, okay? but uh, if we give them not a simple answer, but uh, how we can reach to the answer, like this one. Okay, this is question. And in the standard prompt case, okay, we just demonstrate the answer. But in this case, okay, uh, answer is the kind of uh, the steps we consider to solve the problem. So in this case, uh, Roger started with, with five walls, okay, two cans of three, tennis balls each is, uh, okay, so maybe we need to read uh, the original problem. Okay, Roger had five tennis balls. He buy two more cans of tennis ball. Each can has three tennis balls. Then how many tennis balls does he have now? Okay, and uh, okay, two cans of tennis balls each is six tennis balls, okay. Then five plus six is 11, the answer is 11, okay. so. Just showing the system the way uh, we come to the answer, then I put we put the question. 
then the system actually try to mimic this answer. So it, it output step by step calculation and gives the correct answer. Okay, so we don't do any fine tuning or any uh, uh, training, but just giving uh, the way we think the program, uh, machine language model mimics this process and comes to the correct answer. And so this is very uh, okay, interesting uh, phenomena. And the finding of uh, chain of thought is chain of thought prompting does not positively impact you know, small models, okay? So they, in that, uh, those performance gains could be achieved uh, when uh, using the models of uh, 100 billion parameters or more, okay? So this paper also say that, okay, chain of thought is effective only on the uh, very large language, uh, language models, okay? And uh, okay, and the chain of thought prompting has larger performance gains for more complicated problems like arithmetic reasoning or symbolic and com common sense reasoning tasks where we cannot go to the answer directly. Okay, we need some steps to come to the answer. So in this, in such problems, chain of thought is quite effective. Okay, and uh, there is another interesting topic named a zero shot chain of thought prompting. Okay. So idea is quite simple, but uh, looks to be quite effective. Okay. So what is important in chain of thought is we have to give demonstration like this. Okay. So for each question, we have to give a, a show system the way we reach to the answer. Okay. But uh, uh, okay, zero shot chain of thought prompting is just to ask the system. Okay. After giving a question. Just ask system, uh, let's think step by step. Okay. Then a language model thinks step by step, producing this kind of output. Okay. Then by putting this one as uh, okay, uh, questions and this uh, output, and ask them what therefore the answer is. Okay. Then the system answers. Uh, Okay, uh, the correct answer. Okay, so it is kind of using a uh, large language model to generate chain of thought prompting. Okay, so uh, uh, we don't need to, to compose any change of thought prompting by ourselves. Okay, and also it is not very as good as real chain, so, chain of thought uh, prompting, but uh, it gives a very good result compared with uh, standard prompting. Okay. And another interesting uh, okay, uh, direction is uh, giving a self consistency with chain of thought. Okay. Chain of thought prompting actually asks okay, uh, <clears throat> system by giving the uh, demonstration in the chain uh, uh, step by step. Uh, format and ask language model to answer. Okay, so uh, language model uh, produces step by step inference and give the answer. Okay, but uh, uh, this is kind of greedy recording, uh, decoding. Okay, we can use language model to produce a lot of different answers. Okay, so the uh, this paper actually tried to generate uh, as many as uh, 40 outputs, and each output has some answer, okay? And in this case, they just uh, applied majority voting. So in, in this case, there are uh, uh, two answers of uh, $18, okay, one answer of uh, $26. So 18 is majority of this one. So they just pick up this one and get the correct uh, result, okay? So this is an uh, uh, interesting usage of chain of thought. And uh, another idea is, uh, okay, use uh, this kind of tree structure, which is actually the general problem, problem solving uh, algorithm to, uh, okay, to uh, <clears throat> reach to the uh, 
uh, the answer. Okay, so the difference is like that. Okay, uh, standard prompting is just put one prompt to get the output. Okay, and chains of sort is to show that a chain of sort as a prompt to produce a chain of sort result. Okay, and the uh, self consistency actually applied. Uh, okay, to try the output of several chain of sort uh, output and obtain the answer by majority voting. Okay. And the tree of sort uh, idea is to generate a one step inference by using the kind of sort generator. And for each uh, step, uh, okay, they try to put another state evaluator to select the best one among the several possibilities until uh, we got uh, the answer. Okay, so idea looks quite interesting, but uh, and promising because uh, tree of sort is actually the generalization of chain of sort. But uh, uh, actually, the problems taken in this paper is quite simple ones, like okay, like mini crosswords. Okay, and uh, it is two specific problems, and uh, it is not easy to make that generalized. Okay, and actually, there is another paper. Uh, which actually introduces chain of thought using language models. And they actually independent paper and uh, uh, they don't refer to each other. So it is uh, in them independently published. But uh, in this paper, they just apply depth first search with backtracking, uh, which consists of uh, prompt agent and the checker module, which is directly corresponds to sort of generator and state evaluator. Okay. And uh, and they applied this model with a stock puzzle. It's a natural language a problem. Okay, so uh, the idea looks good to be quite good, but the problem is how to define okay sort of generator or state evaluator or uh, in the same thing a prompt agent and the check module check module. Okay, maybe sort of generator could be uh, okay. This could be done by applying language model not to solve everything, but to just give one step inference. But the different thing is state evaluator. This is actually the evaluation of output of a, a language model. And we, this is actually the problem in, in many situations, like uh, we need to evaluate the output of language model if the output is helpful or not uh, toxic, Okay. So such kind of evaluation is quite important. And uh, this problem actually appears in this idea as well. Okay. We need to uh, design a good evaluator at intermediate stage. And uh, that is why they applied to quite simple models, uh, so quite simple problems, where the, this kind of evaluation is uh, composed quite straightforwardly or uh, evaluator could be uh, written by as a rule. Okay, so actually this shows, uh, I just shows several directions for uh, prompt engineering. And uh, I, I think that this tree of sort could be quite important, will be researched um, further. Okay, uh, sorry that I we have used up all of my time and this is references of uh, this talk. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, any questions? Okay, do you have any questions? Please uh, speak up or write your questions in the chat. Okay, there is one uh, question. Are uh, there uh, any attempt to develop nice evaluator, not just for the but Okay, this is what I said that. Okay, this is actually quite a diff difficult thing, but uh, uh, because uh, it depends on uh, each of the objective. Okay, in the tree of sort case, uh, objective could be uh, how far or how close current state is to any one of the goal. Okay, and you may find that tree of sort uh, idea is quite similar to uh, actually general problem solver. Actually, quite this is quite similar to uh, shogi and goal problem where they use uh, Monte Carlo tree search. Okay. But uh, in those games, okay, 
the objective is quite clear because objective is either, uh, okay, I can win or not. Okay. So if, if the objective is that kind of simple case, maybe we can construct, although it may be difficult, but the construct uh, a kind of evaluator. But uh, okay, so I think I can say it depends. Okay. Okay, and other questions. Does the prompt engineering depends on the model choice? For example, uh, same code applies, GPTs are different. Uh, okay. Um, the idea of prompting doesn't uh, depend on uh, model choice. We can, we can apply uh, any models. Okay. And, uh, but uh, of course, that uh, larger models and the models using larger training data will give a better result. And uh, okay, as a uh, chain of thought paper actually uh, checked that the small model cannot be uh, okay, quite uh, okay. Chain of thought does not effective uh, is not effective to uh, small data. So their conclusion was the language model should be large enough, like more than one hundred billion parameters, to be the chain of thought uh, effective. Okay. And the third question is, besides uh, remote learning, are you aware of work on learning, reward function or self-supervised way and use uh, remote learning besides next word prediction? Um, uh, okay, sorry, I don't know uh, this kind of uh, uh, okay, research because uh, Next word prediction uh, is actually, we know the answer. Uh, if we get a good data, then we know what is next word. So we don't need any reward function in this kind of to topic. Okay. okay. Okay, there's another question. What do you think about the feasibility of the idea of fine tuning the language model to accommodate predicate logic? Okay. as uh, Got thinking aid in order to improve the reasoning ability and also the machine readability of uh, uh, LM output. Okay, yeah, I think it's good idea to apply chain of thought to uh, okay logical inference. Okay, and I think that uh, the problems that is logical inference will be uh, quite uh, okay. Um, we could say um, maybe applicable to uh, chain of thought uh, method, okay. But uh, so there um, some of the common sense which needs logical inference got better result using a chain of thought, okay. But uh, uh, we don't, I don't know any work which actually uses real predicate logic. Okay? Maybe there could be some kind of work, but I don't know at the moment. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, many questions. Maybe I, I will stop sharing. Final part of the workshop is open discussion uh, on the uh, future of AI, AGI, and humanity. But that that's a very broad question. So uh, uh, let's see. Um, I would like to ask all the uh, presenters this question. What kind of research is necessary to advance AI beyond Last language model. So I, I suppose uh, uh, all the speakers are in. Uh, are, are they all participating? So, so this is my question, and, and my my answer to this question, somewhat I talked about on uh, Friday, in, in order to uh, develop something to be called that uh, artificial general intelligence. I suppose we need uh, two things. One is to implement cyclic inferences because human thoughts involve an uh, indefinite hypothesis and test cycle like this, uh, which is impossible uh, to implement by feed forward networks, obviously. And another relevant uh, insight is that programs with cycles or loops are far more powerful than those without uh, cycles or loops, which is a common sense for, for all the uh, computer scientists, right? And and uh, you know, feasible approaches to to this issue would be 
would include uh, energy-based uh, models and uh, equilibrium models and so on. So may maybe some kind of externalization of uh, the, the knowledge is, uh, uh, you know, uh, effective to, 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 to attain this goal. And another thing is the other thing is uh, learning by real experience. I, I won't uh, talk about this too much, but knowledge is basically grounded on physical reality uh, rather than you know text. So, so uh, not just text, but also uh, physical experiences are necessary to to acquire a real knowledge. So uh, th this is what, what I have in my mind. But uh, I, I'd like uh, to to ask all the presenters. Uh, this question and, and expect each of them to answer this in well less than one minute. So uh, can can we uh, do this in a chronological order? So, so uh, Matthias, would you say uh, something about this in one minute, please? Hi. Uh, okay. Thanks. So, uh, so I so that's a simple answer, but I actually do agree with a lot of the things you say. So. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in in a way that um creating a hypothesis like some so so what gpt4 does now it, it basically has like well we don't know how many layers but let's say it has a, a quarter hundred layers it can basically do 100 logical steps right that's the so each layer can basically do one step so what you say is that the towards hei what one needs is is a way of not only creating an internal representation of a question or the world but also being able to reflect on it, maybe in an in, in indefinite loop, right? So that's what humans do when they when they think about ideas. And so, so that's the one thing I want to put an emphasis on. Uh, let me let me just add maybe for the other speakers. That's actually what I what I asked you, I think, on Friday, mm -hmm. at uh, when you brought up these slides. So I brought up consciousness uh, at this slide because I, I think there is. Uh, a belief in the community or the, the opinion about this is split, which is that some people do think that consciousness is a necessary component of intelligence. So if intelligence uh, is scaled up, so HEI will inevitably be conscious and other people think that it is not. And some people think that is consciousness will require cyclic information process. So this is an open question. I want just want maybe to add it to your questions, and maybe the other speakers can, if they have an opinion, right. that can speak up. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, shall we move on to Noriki? Uh, are you here? Ah uh, yes. So in my opinion, so so there are many things in the world what that cannot be represented in natural languages. So I think we need to develop us. Uh, System uh, running model so to run what what to run non uh, something which that is not represented in natural languages yeah so this is my uh, opinion to this question all right then uh, uh, how about uh, Hiroki do they have uh, something to say about it hey. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. In my opinion, uh, promising deduction is to exploit uh, external databases to acquire new knowledge for AI and uh, confirm factuality uh, for reliability. Hmm. So, can you elaborate what you mean by that? So, uh, it's not clear to me. So, as you know, the, the current problem of the language models like GPT is the hallucination that is not uh, that is not based on the fac uh, factuality. Mm -hmm. So to <clears throat> to use to use a language model for for other applications, uh, it is. Uh, very important to check the fact uh, using uh, databases or uh, existing uh, documents as a reference for human. Hmm. So it is that another module uh, yeah, to, to be added upon uh, large language models? Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, okay. Thank you. So uh, how about you, uh, Matsumoto-san? Oh, okay. 
Okay, one of the things is, as uh, Hiroki said, that I'm interested in how to utilize uh, some uh, knowledge base, knowledge graph, or big, big such kind of data to uh, use uh, with language model. Okay, but uh, okay, another direction will be we need a kind of some uh, meta reasoning to okay um, to check or to observe the uh, the behavior of language model. Um, actually, we are we human actually doing such kind of meta reasoning. Okay, so uh, okay, if the general uh, okay intelligence to emerge, maybe we need to compose uh, the kind of model which have not the kind uh, kind of simple uh, next word prediction, but the kind of meta reasoning model which actually checks and observe the behavior of the base model. But the problem is uh, we cannot have uh, okay large scale data for such meta reasoning. Okay, current language model was successful because there are already a lot of raw data, okay? but we don't have raw data for uh, such kind of meta reasoning. Okay. So another more okay direction would be uh, that's why I uh, okay presented tree of thought. Okay, so maybe we can use uh, this kind of uh, stepwise reasoning by uh, okay. So making human to interact with machine, because I said that evaluation of the output will be quite difficult, but a human may do such kind of evaluation. So maybe we can construct a kind of tree of sort mechanism uh, loop in a human in the loop. Okay, so this is uh, maybe another way of using large language models. So maybe we need to decompose uh, the problems we have in uh, steps and uh, we have to ask a language model to each of the step and checking the result and ask them to another alternatives so that kind of method could be uh, could be one of the direction of uh, research of how to use uh, current language models okay thank, thank you uh, actually that's very close to what i'm quite currently doing so but uh, let, let, let's uh, discuss uh, this in in some near future and i hope we could uh, discuss more but unfortunately i must be prepared for the next meeting so let me uh, close uh, this discussion i like i did, did like to hear uh, the same question uh, ask the same question to the audience but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, we've just uh, run out of time. So, uh, well, finally, let's uh, thank Matthias for uh, setting up this opportunity for us to, you know, uh, discuss uh, this issue and uh, present uh, ideas to each other. And so, thank you, Matthias. And uh, would you say something finally? Yeah, I uh, thank you very much for the for the very nice talks. I'm I'm very happy with the the outcome. So yeah. Uh, let me, if there's no further comments or from the other speakers who want to speak up, I will close the workshop uh, and yeah, see you guys around soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.